In my hands, I have two gaming CPUs. This is the 7700X, this is the 7800X3D. And this is actually my personal rig. And today, we're going to be doing a very simple comparison between these two CPUs to see which one is actually better for gaming. We know it is going to be the 7800X3D, but the question is, by how much? Because while both of these are eight core gaming CPUs, the price difference at the time of filming is actually about 90 pounds. And as you go without saying that this is obviously quite a lot of money, and in real world practical terms, that's either money in your back pocket or it's probably going to be an upgrade from one GPU to the next, maybe an extra upgrade for your SSD to get you some more capacity, better cooling, more RGB fans, it doesn't matter what's actually going to be more useful, that extra theoretical frame rate that you might not be getting, or pretty much anything else. It's going to be a really interesting video and I honestly can't wait to test it with this RTX 4090, so stay tuned to learn everything you need to know right after a short word from this video's sponsor. The Gigabyte G5 is THE gaming laptop for those that want to play the latest games without spending an arm and a leg. Packing the latest RTX 40 series graphics, the Gigabyte G5 is ready for jaw-dropping ray tracing and frame rate boosting DLSS 3. Learn more about this 144Hz gaming beast today with the link down below. Let's get started and waste as minimal time as possible, but I do want to give you a quick refresher between all the different CPUs so that you can understand what it is that you're buying. Firstly, all of these are AM5, so if you have an AM4 compatible motherboard, you have to buy a new one, you can't drop these in. You're going to need DDR5 memory, which can get quite expensive to get these to work, but essentially both of these are 8 core 16 thread CPUs. The power between the two of them should be fairly similar. To complicate things even further, you can buy a non non-suffix, I suppose, CPU, that would be the 7700. That actually uses less power, so you don't need as much cooling, but has similar performance to the X, whereas the X3D actually doesn't clock quite as highly as the X, but it has this 3D V-cache on the CPU itself that in certain applications like games that like to have faster and more cache, it means that your frame rates can be higher, whether this is your averages or your 1% lows, but it is likely to be a little bit hit and miss depending on the games that you play as to whether this is going to be significantly faster than your 7700X or whether they're actually going to be fairly similar. Oh, my PC has got so bored of me talking it's sent itself to sleep! I don't do the same with you, do I? But not only are the differences between the two going to be fairly game dependent, it is of course also going to depend on your GPU, your graphics card, because if you've got something like the RTX 4090, you're going to be very CPU limited, very bottleneck. So having extra performance on these is almost certainly going to translate into better performance, especially at lower resolutions. Whereas if you've got something that's more low to mid range, then chances are you're going to be bottlenecked by your GPU. So having an even faster CPU is literally going to make no differences to your frame rate. It might in some 1% lows, but generally speaking, you want to spend more money on this rather than more money allocated to these. Oh, I'm happy with that. That was concise. Let's get gaming. Oh no. Mum, where are my custom PC-centric mouse mats? What's that? Links down in the description below. Don't worry, I found it. Grab yours today, now shipping. And I don't think you've actually seen this PC in a good couple of months. And the truth is, I've just been using this, playing games, doing pretty much all the testing I need to do. And honestly, I have loved it. The only thing I don't like about it is the stock fractal fans that come with this case are not necessarily loud, but they're not the absolute quietest. So I think it will be good to actually change these out and get something a little bit higher specs. But otherwise, this PC is surprisingly as near silent as you can realistically get when you're actually playing games. Like, what have I done? I've completed Returnal on this, the remake of Dead Space on this, been playing a bit of multiplayer, now I've moved on to Batman. Genuinely in love with this thing. And if you do want to check out the full build guide with this, where we go through everything in it and all of the problems and things we had to overcome to get it to fall into this like small chassis, you can find that video in the top right corner of your screen. But otherwise, this video is actually going to be pretty simple. I have my notepad, I have a few columns. We're going to be testing this PC with the 7700X, a 1440p and 4K, in all of the games I've actually going to be playing. Playing. This is about real world testing, not just the most CPU demanding. All of these are, I guess these are almost like a mixture of my favorite games that I keep going back to time and time again. And at the end, we have our numbers. Get your bets in now, comments below, don't cheat. How much difference is there gonna be with the 4090 and the X3D? Because if there's a big difference, I will genuinely buy one of these buy one of these at the end of the video and then put it in my rig for real, I promise. Let us begin with what I think has to be the most demanding game on PC right now, some Cyberpunk 2077 with the path tracing update available. Enabled. On. 
We're going to set this to ray tracing overdrive. DLSS frame generation on. DLSS we're set to performance. And then when we scroll down, you'll see that we have path tracing technology preview enabled. What sort of frame rate are we going to get? Well, around about 92 frames a second or so, but our latency, remember, is a little bit... I say on the high side, for a 4090, this is fine. Like, I've been testing this on quite a few different GPUs, and usually you get about 52 with it off with everything else on. So to be able to actually run the path tracing update at this frame rate and with a decent enough latency to actually be able to play and enjoy it is pretty phenomenal. I mean, this has to be the best looking game i mean it is absolutely ridiculous like i'd say that the stuff at the top looks a bit more normal it's not anything crazy but when you actually see the reflections and just how real everything else looks as you're driving along the city it is absolutely ridiculous but the thing that is definitely worth noting is that we're getting around about 98 percent gpu utilization at the moment so i would actually be strongly surprised if we saw any difference by upgrading our cpu to the x3d but that's why we're doing this test to show you the differences in all the different games Let's press on though to our second game and this is Valorant and for a lot of people you will find that this is actually very easy to be CPU bottlenecked by. It does say at the top right hand corner that we're not though. We're currently setting about 98% GPU utilization and we're getting an absolutely ridiculous frame rate of 600 frames a second but this is at 4k. 4k max settings and we're getting 620 frames a second. That is ridiculous. But I confess, I did open this up because I did want to see some GPU bottlenecking. So let's turn this down to 1440p. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. Is that possible? Can we be getting 950, 1064 frames a second? How have I never tested this before? That is insane. At least we're getting some bottlenecking now. That means we've got more frames a second on the table. Our latency is now about two or three milliseconds. Utilization about 91%. This PC is ridiculous. But as I said at the start of this video, I want this to be a very personal video to me. This is about whether the games I play will get a higher frame rate with the X3D. And so because of that, I really wanted to test Returnal because I've pretty much played this game more than anything else on this system. About 30 hours or so. And as you can see, it is an absolutely ridiculously all over the place game. There is so much going on. It really is a feat of engineering. But that does mean that it is ridiculously difficult to run. I think it is very well optimised for what it is. But as you can see, there are so many particle effects and things going on that this is actually incredibly demanding on the CPU and the GPU. So this is running at 4K. And there are times when the frame rate will drop where we are actually CPU dependent. But then the rest of the time, you are going to be resting on your graphics card. But this is at 4K with DLSS set to quality. And as soon as we turn this down to 1440p, you will see that we do start to see a fair bit of CPU bottlenecking all of the time. In fact, actually, it's a lot larger than I would have expected. Remember, I have been playing this on a 4K television downstairs. So I have been playing this at 4K resolution the whole time. I didn't actually expect to see that little utilization on the GPU. I know this is a 4019 and it's like pretty overkill, but look at that, about 64%. So clearly, if you do buy a more powerful CPU, this is a game that should see quite a dramatic difference. Upping the ante and going backwards and forwards at the same time, what you're seeing here is Dead Space. And this is right at the end of the game, so we won't have any spoilers, even though this is old and you've probably seen it all before. But we just walk down the corridor to give you an idea of how the frame rate will change. This is quite a nice sequence, actually, because it's all real-time rendered, so you get to see everything like compared between this and the other CPUs and maybe the other resolutions. But at 4K, it doesn't really seem to be bottlenecked at all. Whereas at 1440p, chances are you are going to see a slightly lower frame rate. Though we are using DLSS here, so I guess you could turn this off if you wanted to maximize quality. But this is a game that is very heavily dependent on your graphics card, so I'd worry more about that than the CPU. Within reason, obviously. Let's move on now to the heavy lifting with a game I know you want to see more than anything else, some Call of Duty Warzone 2. Because this is actually intensely CPU bound. I still don't really know exactly what the game is doing, but clearly it's a lot. And here's the crazy thing, right? What you're seeing here is 4K resolution with DLSS, yet we're already CPU bound. We're currently around about 70% on the GPU. So that does go to show that assuming we get a CPU that is faster in Warzone 2, remember, just because it's faster doesn't mean it'll be faster in this game thanks to that 3D V cache. That also means there could be some very big performance gains to be had. And I'm excited to see it. Now one final game for you lovely folks that love a bit of Apex Legends. This is 1440p. And this is pretty much just to demonstrate that actually, again, this is a game that isn't really going to benefit from a stronger CPU than the 7700X. Because as you can clearly see, we're actually hitting a very hard cap of 300 that's actually baked into the engine or the game itself. Even by removing the FPS cap, it still maxes out at 300. 
Don't understand why, but it does. So you can see our GPU utilization is around about 60, 70%, but by putting in an X3D, unless they update the game somehow, it's not gonna make any difference at all. But we'll still take the benchmarks anyway. Could affect the lows. Right, so then, I think that is actually us ready to move on to the next step and the most exciting bit, which is actually getting our X3D in our rig. Should we take it out of the box and actually have a look? I mean, I'll pretend that I've never used this before, but truth be told, I have. I built something that was actually really cool. It was an entirely blackout X3D and 7900 XTX rig. You can find this video at the top right corner of your screen. I'm gonna do this the super safe way, which actually in plain English means the way I don't recommend you do. But how would you see otherwise? Oh no, wait, actually, what am I saying? We need to actually give this a BIOS update because of course, all the motherboards actually predated the X3D. So while I think they actually still will all work with the 3D chip, they won't properly take advantage of the 3D vCache unless you update the BIOS. It is very simple. I'll show you how to do it. Go on your motherboard manufacturer's website and find the latest BIOS. I've put it on a USB drive. We'll go to tool, flashback utility, find our cap BIOS file. Do you really want to update the BIOS? Really? Do you actually want to do it? You want to update the BIOS? Are you insane? I suppose in plain English it's saying it's very dangerous to update the BIOS if you don't know what you're doing because if you pull the cable out, trip over it, or there's a power cut, then you can actually risk your whole motherboard being bricked. I think the higher end ones do tend to have better resiliency to this and some actually have dual BIOSes, but still, it's not a good idea. Only do it when you need to and do it very carefully. I think we're good. Let's get this show on the road. Let's unplug our PC, make sure all the power and things are drained out of it, and then let's get our CPU cooler taken off. If you're doing this yourself, obviously lay it down flat. It's way safer, but it's nicer for you guys to be able to see, isn't it? Let's give its bum a little bit of a wipe, shall we? And then very gently, I'm gonna pop the hood. This is such a silly idea to do this standing up. Why? Why do I do these things? Remove the 7700X, and then there we go. CPU upgraded. Right, let's get this tightened, powered on, and hopefully it still works. Yes! <laughs> Let's go into our setup and make sure we're restoring our RAM XMP profile to its default. This is running at 6,000 megahertz, I think. 6,000, 30, 38, 38, 96. Right, let's go. We are back with some Cyberpunk. And remember, we're not expecting to see a drastic difference. And having a look at our frame rate, what were we getting before? Around about 95 frames a second. So we might actually be ever so slightly higher. We're about 102, 104. For minimums now of about 94, 95. We'll be running the proper benchmarks and showing you in just a second so you can see the full scientific results. But I have to say, this is looking pretty, pretty neat actually. I mean, the latency is 45 now, whereas previously it was 55. Is this placebo? Or have we actually improved Cyberpunk with a 3D CPU? Let us open up what was probably the most bottlenecked game of the lot though, some Returnal at 1440p. And here we are looking at around about 81, 83%. I mean, we are still getting 168 frames a second, so that is another point. I mean, do you need any more in Returnal, even if you are losing some performance or at least leaving it on the table? But I guess that is a question you need to ask yourself, don't you? The difference between about 310 pounds, the cheapest that we've seen, I think, for the 7700 versus about 440 for the X3D. It is a big difference. Definitely does seem a fair bit better though. Let's move back over to our multiplayer games though and let's start with Valorant. And as you can see, our frame rate is still a little bit all over the place, but it is also still over 1000 frames a second. I've never seen FPS numbers move so fast in my life. But that latency though, that latency, three milliseconds, it never ceases to amaze. But let's swap back over to the big one, some Warzone 2 and my money is on a big difference. It's gotta be. Well, let's have a look. Let's jump out of the plane and straight away, our utilization is still very similar to how it was before. This is running at 4K with DLSS and as we've now touched the ground, we're getting about, what's that, 155 frames a second, 10 milliseconds of latency, but we are still leaving a fair bit of that 4090 performance on the table. Is that disappointing? I don't know, we're gonna have to wait for the full benchmarks. Unfortunately, they're all done, which means handing over to the one, the only, 
Benchmark. Wait, what? You want me to talk now? Really? I'm not prepared. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Benchmarkers. And this has actually been a really fun one for me because obviously this is a personal PC. This is something I've been using now for actually a week and a half since doing this bit of voiceover. And genuinely, the difference can be absolutely outstanding, especially in something like Warzone, when you're able to get a much higher average. It is very, very impressive. But even if you're going to be playing at 4K, this is a worthwhile upgrade, to be honest, if you're spending loads of money on a gaming PC. But then when we look at those 1440p numbers, the difference is ridiculous. This is the real deal, folks. This is the chip that I think most people really were waiting for when they launched the 7000 series of Ryzen CPUs. This is very much a pure gaming CPU. It does that perfectly. Perfectly, and it is going to be brilliant for pretty much what every gamer is going to use their PC for. Eight cores is still plenty, but do be aware that obviously that is the trade-off that you're making. The only other thing really that you need to consider is of course going for something like the original 7700X that is a fair bit cheaper, gives you better cost per frame, or maybe going for the 7900 that is about the same sort of price of this, but does give you four more cores. So if you're going for like 4080, 4090, 7900 XTX, anything like that. I clearly think this is gonna be the chip to go for, but that's not to say the others aren't worth considering because it is gonna come down to personal preference and what you're gonna be using your PC for, as well as value. And so then, there we are, the results. And genuinely, I am very impressed with the X3D and spoiler alert, I will be ordering one. This is going to have an X3D chip inside it. The difference with an RTX 4090 is quite substantial. It is gonna vary depending on the game. It's gonna vary depending on the GPU load, the settings that you want to use. But fundamentally, despite the fact that the X3D is that good, is it worth the extra money? And this one is still a little bit up in the air. And I think as a general rule, if you're spending probably over 750 pounds or dollars, then and yes, you should get the 3D over the standard 7700 or the X version because clearly there you've got enough horsepower to really get the most out of it. But anything lower than that, it pretty much comes down to the sort of game that you're playing. If you're playing something like Valorant where those 1% lows do make quite a big difference, then that is definitely worth considering an upgrade. But I still wouldn't trade the GPU horsepower for the extra CPU. If you're having to actively downgrade your graphics card, you're going to spend less money, then I don't necessarily think it's worth it. But don't go buying it because you want to be future-proof. Buy it because the system you have needs as much CPU horsepower as possible, and fundamentally, you have it within your budget to actually afford this chip in the first place. I wouldn't want to compromise on other things because the 7700 is a very good CPU, but for pure gaming, you can't argue. The X3D is an amazing chip. It comes highly recommended and I need to go buy one. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed this video. Get yourself subscribed. Let me know your thoughts on the X3D down below. Are you considering getting one of these? Do you already have it? Do you think it's a waste of money? And of course, as always, if you do want to check out current pricing on anything that's in my personal rig, including the 7800 X3D, you can find that listed all down below with my Amazon affiliate links. And while you're down there, why not check out Gigabyte's G5 gaming laptop? The G5 packs a 144 hertz display into a solid, sturdy laptop body with up to a 12 core Intel processor and an RTX 4060 graphics card. No matter whether you're wanting multiplayer action or ray trace DLSS3 immersion, the G5 is the laptop you've been waiting for. It even comes with a two year warranty. Grab yours today with the link down below. But thank you so much for watching this video. We'll catch you in the next one.